Okay, we're going All right, Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, as always, we give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Kodash. Yahweh is the true name of our Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son and our Lord and Savior, from the world we know as Jesus Christ. Ba'ashem, Yahweh Kodash is in the name of the Holy Spirit, and it's the inspiration given to us to edify those that have ears to hear. We will honor to our teachers, the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to you, sincere, humble brethren, faithfully and diligently preaching this word with fear and trembling. Shalom to the believers that subscribe to this truth. Shalom. All right, we the GMS Memphis Count, coming at you with a live lesson. All right, Great Millstone won't be broken. All right, and we're going to get right into it. And uh, pretty much, we're going to get into this word, Great Millstone, and bring out the spirit, all right, uh, to edify what Great Millstone really represents, okay? You know, you brothers that's been in this thing for a while, you know, of course, you younger brothers, all right, may have heard, all right, but this is the edification, all right, Lord willing, you'll be able to receive it. Go ahead, bro, Revelation 18. This, this is Revelation chapter 18, verse 21, and a mighty angel, read loud, this is Revelation chapter 18, verse 21. Shot. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Right. So this angel, all right, speaking uh, pretty much to John the Revelator, showed him a great millstone, all right, cast in the sea, all right, that destroyed Babylon. Now, what, what is that great millstone? Now, we're going to get this word, right? Great millstone. First, we're going to get great, all right? So the word for great is megas, all right? It's where you get the word mega from, okay? Now, when you go into it, it says outline of building usage one, great, all right? Of the external form or sensible appearance of things or persons, okay? I'm gonna jump a little bit. D, statue and age, great, old, okay? D, Used of intensity and its degrees with great effort of the affections and emotions of the mind of natural events powerfully affecting the senses. Violent, mighty, strong. Two, predicted as, predicted of rank. Okay, rank as belonging to. It says, things esteemed highly for their importance of great moment, of great weight, importance. A thing to be highly esteemed for excellence. Blessings, right? Of the Most High's preeminent blessings. Strong definition. It says literally or figuratively in wide, uh, in a very wide application, exceedingly great, high, large, all right, strong. Now let's get millstone, right? So that was great. Now let's see what millstone. 
So the Greek word is G3459, right? And it says, Strong's G3458, Lulas, Lulas. So like it, 30. Players lexicon, related entry, Mulinas, Mulinas. Right, but I'm gonna get straight to the point on this one because it really goes into the root. Now, when you go into this one, it just says pretty much a millstone, and then you go into the into the strong definition, right? It says a grinder. Now, hold that word grinder in the etymology, Kamaya. Now, when you go to the root, it says through the idea of hardship. So, millstone goes into what? And hardship, right? Now, what does hardship deal with? When you go into the outline of biblical usage, the root word for millstone is Strong's G 3433, Malis. Malis. Which says outline of biblical usage one with difficulty. Hardly. See? So it's saying that Babylon the Great is going to go down. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be with a great labor of difficulty and hardship okay not easily an example scarcely very rarely now let's get to strongs and the synonyms having much work with so it's going to take a lot of work for babylon the great to go down okay Strong definition, with difficulty, hardly, scarcely, with much work. Now, who did that work essentially begin with? Who did this, this ministry begin with? Yahweh Shah. Remember when you went into the word great, it says of, of the most highest preeminence. All right? So preeminence goes into, matter of fact, I'm going to get that word real quick because I don't want to tell you something just off the top of my uh, mind, but I know pre goes into uh, before, right? So it says, Google definition, the fact of surpassing all others, superior, superiority, superiority, all right? So it says, of the most highs, of the most highs preeminence. Okay, so this is a superior work that was set up to be done uh, from the beginning, all right? This great millstone was already uh, set up from the beginning to be uh, that spirit to destroy Babylon the great, man, all right? Beginning with who? Yahweh Shah, all right? Now... Hold that word grinder. Let's get the precept. You still got grinder in the etymology? Yeah. All right. Now let's go to, uh, we're going to 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter. 2nd Ezra 9, and we're going to start it at verse 17. <coughs> God, let's 2nd Ezra 9, and 17. And he answered me, saying, Like as the field is, so it is also the seed. Go ahead. As the flowers be, such are the colors also. Go ahead. Such as the worker slaki, slaki, such as the workman is, such also is the work. Such as the workman, now read it again. Such as the workman is, such also is the work. Such as the workman is, such also is the work. All right? Hold it. Now give me the word grinder. This is grinder in the etymology, and it says... One who's grind, who, one who grinds grain. Uh, let me. One who grinds, one who grinds grain. So the work is to do what? Grind grain. Okay. Now we are gonna get that here in a second too. You got, you see some more in there. Just grind see, dealing with work. I see a uh, labor, a machine that process materials by grinding or crushing. A machine tool that polish metal. What's the stone? You mean the stone this one? No, I'm in the etymology. Oh, etymology. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Here it is. Grind. To, to, to rub together, crush into powder. 
great scrape destroyed by crushing. Mm. <laughs> yeah, now keep all of these, uh, you know, defining words in mind because it's, you know, this lesson unfolds. The precepts are going to link uh, the edification uh, together, man. All right? Going to, going to build this lesson up. All right? Now it says to gnash teeth, corn, grain. All right? <laughs> now, right now we're dealing with the source of this power. Okay? The, 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 superior, the superior force behind this power is who? Yahweh Shah. So... Go back, it says in 2nd Ezra 9 17, so are the work, so, so, so is the work, man. So is the work, right? Right. Go ahead. Back in 2nd Ezra 9 and 17, uh, we begin from the top. He answered me saying, like it's the field is, so is also the seed. It's the flowers be, such are the colors also. Such as the workman is, such also is the work. Now go ahead. And it's the husbandman is himself. So it's his husband. Now, who is the husband? It says, and as the husbandman is himself, so is his husbandry. So who is the husband and the husbandry? Right? Jump to 1 Corinthians. Matter of fact, to Mayo, you get 2 Timothy, the second chapter, and you give me 1 Corinthians. Oh. Uh, Three and verse eight. But well, give me Second Timothy two and six first. This is Second Timothy, chapter two, verse six. The husbandmen that labor must be first partakers of the fruits. Read it again. This is Second Timothy, chapter two, verse six. The husbandmen, men that labor must be first partakers of the fruits. The husbandmen that labor must be first all right now who is that husbandman give me first uh what i just called for first corinthians 3 yeah. start at verse 8 first corinthians 3 James eight. 5 and 7 now he that planted and he that watered are one now he that planted and he that watered it are one right okay <laughs> because a husbandman essentially is what someone who who plants seeds tills the ground and plants seeds okay now, in order to plant a seed, you have to do what? Grind the ground. You have to grind the ground to, to uh, uh, make the soil soft before you plant the seed. Go ahead, bro. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Now, who got the highest uh, reward? Re, 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 you still at that scripture you just read? Uh, 2 no. Timothy 2 and 6. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6. The husbandman that labor must be first partakers of the fruit. So he got it. The fruit is the reward. So Yahweh Shai, all right, <laughs> which I, I just revealed it before the precept came out to really reveal, but through the spirit, you will understand that this is talking about Yahweh Shai, man, all right? The great millstone is talking about Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? And the precepts, that's like, like Yahweh Shai says in Hebrews uh, 10 and 7 and Psalms 40 and 7, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. So there's so many parables within this book that all go back to Yahweh Shai. Okay? Go ahead. Uh, first, Start at 8 again. First Corinthians 3 and 8. Now he that planted and he that watered it are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. That's right. For we are laborers too. Did not Yahweh Shah do the greatest labor? Right. Yahweh Shah did the greatest labor. That's why he's sitting on the right hand of the Heavenly Father right now. All right? And all uh, uh, dominion and, 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 and scepters and everything uh, is under his command. All judgment is given to him via the Heavenly Father, man. So he has the greatest reward. But his his uh, kingdom, all right, is to be shared with joint heirs. See, there is a, there's a heritage in Yahweh Shah. He has a uh, brotherhood, okay? 
A husbandry. Go ahead, bro. Yo, verse 9, First Corinthians 3 and 9. Now we are laborers together with Yahweh's Moshai. Ye are Yahweh's Moshai husbandry. Ye are Yahweh's Moshai building. That breaks it down. Right? Read that. Read verse 9 again. Yo, for we are laborers together with Yahweh's Moshai. Ye are Yahweh's Moshai husbandry. Ye are Yahweh's Moshai building. That's what it is, okay? So he has a body, okay? Now let's go back to 2nd Ezra's. Let's go back to 2nd Ezra's 9. Read 18 again. Start pick up, you know, you can pick up back in uh, where you left off at 18. You mean 17? 17, Salaki, Salaki. Yep. It said, uh, such as, for 2nd Ezra's 9 to 17, picking up that such as the workman is, such also is the work, and as the husbandman is himself, so is his husbandry also. So 2 Corinthians 3 and 9, again, just broke down who the husbandman is and who the husbandry is. Right. Go ahead. Yo, it said, for it was the time of the word. Uh-huh. And now when I prepare the word, which was not yet made, even, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man spake against me. No man spoke against the, he uh, the heavenly father and his only begotten son. Because there was no man to speak against the yeah. heavenly father and his only begotten son. Okay? He said before it was, but when he prepared the world before it was even made for them to live in it. <laughs> so what did he do? Ultimately, he prepared not just the world to be made, but he prepared a script. He prepared, uh, really, we're going to get to it. He prepared prophecy, man. He prepared all the events to happen that was going to happen before they happen. <laughs> That's what the Great Millstone really about. But we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep going. Go ahead, bro. Verse nineteen. It said, "For then everyone obeyed, but now the manners of them which are created in this world that is made are corrupted." Look up this word. By a perpetual seed. Yeah, it said now the people that are living in the world are corrupted by a perpetual seed, okay? Because just as Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has a body, he's the husbandman that has a husbandry, and we're laboring in the vineyard planting seeds, hey, there's an opposition, there's an adversary. And he's planting seeds too, but his seeds are corrupted, all right? Now let's get that, get, let's get this word corrupted. And, and the, the, the chief uh, vessel of that corrupted seed is Esau Edom, the so-called self-proclaimed white man, the wicked, the devil, the, the uh, that the Bible speaks of, man. I'm gonna read it again. No, no, I'll, okay, go ahead. Yeah, you can read it again. It's a uh, Second nine and nineteen. But then everyone obeyed. But now the manners of them which are created in this world. That is made of corrupted by a perpetual seed and by a law which is unsociable with themselves. Come, you got up? Yeah, I got it. I'm in uh, Marion Webster. Yeah, go ahead. This is uh, corrupted in uh, Marion Webster since 1928. And it's to call someone or something to become dishonest, dishonest and moral. To change something so that it's less pure or valuable. To change. That's it. I mean, if you see some more in there, you can bring it out. But that hit the uh, uh, nail on the head, you know. To say to change from good to bad in more manner or action. And that's why when you read in Isaiah, it's that 29 and 16. It says, surely the turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, all right? Meaning the Lord's work, okay? Because the clay is what the Lord works to form and mold into the image of himself. Uh, also, it became a degenerate plant, you know? Yep. So on it. That's it. Unless you see something else? It's say like, <laughs> to become tainted, tainted or rotten, become morally debased become morally debased, right? So ultimately, uh, corruption goes into, like the brother saying, uh, becoming a degenerate, 
okay? Corrupted goes into being morally impure, right? And pure, the purest, the, the purest morals that anyone can have is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Heavenly Father's righteousness, which is within the contents of the Holy Bible. Yeah. All right, so let's go. Going back to 2 Corinthians 9 and 20. So I consider the word, and behold, they were pale because of the devices that were come into it. Mm -hmm. And I saw and spared it greatly, and have kept me a grape of the cluster, and the plant of a great people. Right, so the Lord say, he spared the world, all right, and kept them from this wickedness that was going on in the world, okay, <clears throat> from this corrupted seed that's being uh, uh, planted, all right, and nurtured. Esau, Edom, and his ways and his philosophies, man. Essentially, which today comes in the form of Babylon the Great, aka America, all right, that's the fruit of that perpetual corrupted seed. And it's also the end of that perpetual corrupt deceit. Go ahead. I know you got a precept. You jump back real quick because I won't finish second measures nine. Go ahead, go, go ahead and get your precept. I see you got some. Then John 17 and 15, I pray not that. It's like I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the word, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Mm -hmm. So going back to second measures nine and 20 again. So I consider the word and behold, they will appear because of the devices that will come into it. And I saw and spared it greatly, and have kept me a grape of the cluster, and a plant of a great people. All right, now, now, watch this. Go ahead. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain. He said, let everybody else, outside of who he has kept, hey, let them perish, and that they were born in vain. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And let my grape, <laughs> let my grape be kept in my plant. Let his grape be kept and his plant, you see, his, and his his husbandry, all right, right. They are all laboring to make sure that uh, his grapes are kept nourished, all right, with the pure morals, which is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the heavenly Father's righteousness, man. Right? That's a great work. That's a hardship. <laughs> yeah, it, it say for with great labor have I made it perfect. For with great labor have I made it perfect, man. Going back to Revelation 18 and 21. That great millstone is Yahweh Shah. Alright. It begins with Yahweh Shah and Yahweh Shah has a body. Okay? That body operates through the spirit that Yahweh Shah has placed within that body, okay, and within that husbandry. So let's go to, uh, let's jump down to Isaiah 47 and uh, 1. Did you read verse 22? Yeah, I'll read it again. Now, if you read it, it's cool. If you read verse 22, it's cool. Yeah, yeah that was 22. Come, come, all right. This is Isaiah. Chapter 47, verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. All right? Which Babylon represents what? Confusion. Okay? Go ahead. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Go ahead. Take the millstone. Take what? Take the millstone. Take the millstones. And grind mill. Uncover thy locks. Make burn the leg. Uncover thy thigh. Pass over the rivers. So when you read in Revelation 18 and 1, it speaks in great, it speaks in uh the great millstone as in a singular sense, right? Say so he saw a stone like a great millstone and said, thus. Uh, Babylon shall be destroyed. All right, with, with, with violence shall Babylon be thrown down and destroyed. Now here you have the prophet Isaiah, which in essence is what another millstone. Okay, because the prophets ultimately are those millstones, man. Okay, because the labor is prophecy. We're prophesying. We're chanting this place uh, into destruction. 
All right. Remember when we went to the word grind, it says uh, destroy. <laughs> I'll get it again. Destroy by crushing. The spirit of Yahweh Shimi Hawashai, which is working through his holy prophets, is crushing Esau Edom's kingdom. Because it's already predestined and set up within the scriptures for us to expose him, all right, for the wicked, uh, as the wicked, as the devil, man, okay? And expose him as ultimately what? The, the problem in the earth. He, he's the reason why, you know, you have abortion, uh, un, un, injustice, usury. You know what I'm saying? You got artificial food. The list goes on. Pretty much, he's the reason why death, because that seed that he's sowing is uh, destruct, death and destruction. Because the fruits of everything that uh, Esau, Edom, and the wicked produces, all right, is the fruits of death. It, it, it turns and it becomes uh, unprofitable. You just gonna make a point? No, no, you got it. Go ahead, bro. Uh, this is Isaiah chapter 47, verse three. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I would take vengeance, and I would not meet thee as a man. See, he said, <laughs> And he's speaking, all right. You see how you see how Isaiah is speaking, but he's speaking through the eyes of Yahweh Shah. Okay, he's within that body, <laughs> cause that's not talking about Isaiah coming back and not meeting uh, the the wicked as a man and, and coming to Babylon with this great power. All right. So when he comes, when he comes, how is he coming? <laughs> He's coming with what? Great power. All right. What is that? What is that power? What? Chariot, though. Yeah, the, the same things that we talk about every every time we prophesy. For lo, be, uh, behold, get, you can get get Isaiah sixty six, right? This the book of Isaiah. 56 and uh, 15. 15. It's, uh, it's like, it's like, for behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to win in his anger with fury and his with built from flames of fire. That's right. For by fire, by his sword, with the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. And this is spiritual power. See, this is power that the world has never seen. Okay? This is spiritual power. And us testifying of that power is really the true power. <laughs> Prophecy, man. Yeah. Okay? You got something? Yeah, this uh the book of Second Ezra 15 and 1. It said, Behold, speak thou the ears of my people, the words of prophecy. The words of prophecy. Which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord, and cause them to be written in the paper, for they are faithful and true. It's what's uncovering the devil. That's what's uncovering mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and, and, and abominations in the earth. <laughs> that's the power that's revealing, but see, if you're not of the foe, if you're not of that great millstone, all right, you can't testify of that power. You can't be a vessel that the Lord uses unless he's already set you up, unless it's a pre unless, unless you're a part of that preeminence, man. You see? So, this is a physical description in Isaiah of 66 and 15, of the power that the Lord's coming with. <laughs> now let's get Luke uh, 17 and 20. If you was finna get something else, go ahead and get what you uh, was gonna get. Okay, cut. Okay, you finna get something else? Yeah, yeah, quick. You get Luke 17 and 20, Baba Kushat. This is, uh, let me see. This is, so yeah. the Lord, the Lord, uh, 
the, the coming of our Lord is prophesied all throughout the scriptures, all right? And the manner in which he's going to come when he comes, okay? Go ahead. Yeah, this is Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man should come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he should reward every man according to his works. That's it. That's it, man. Yeah. Right? I got another one real quick. Uh, just on the top of my head, and I just lost it. Yeah, this is it right here. This you got another one? Yeah, it's like this, this one. On Matthew 24 and 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And then shall see the Son of Man come in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. See? So it, it, it's, it's telling you how the Heavenly uh, Father is going to send uh, Yahweh Shah. All right? Because he said what? Uh, no man know at the hour. Uh, no man know it but the Father. Right. So, you know... <laughs> That's what I want. Call out and how about shot. This is 2 Peter 3 and 9. Then you can get that loop. This is 2 Peter uh, 3. Yep, 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 yep. Con. I skipped the whole verse. Hey, yeah, this... Uh, this is 2 uh, Peter 3 and 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Now, how is it that the scriptures prophesy of our Lord coming with all this great power, but you're not going to know about it until he shows up? Nah. See, that's power within itself. That's power within itself, man. Because... All these signs that uh, are written in the scriptures to warn us of our Lord's coming and prepare the world for the Lord's coming are being manifested. But that same power is blinding a lot of you niggas from being able to see it, man. Really, all you niggas. All niggas are being blinded. All wicked are being blinded. As it says in Daniel the 12th chapter, right? Many shall be purified and made white, uh, but none of the wicked shall understand. All right, loosely paraphrasing. Okay, that's power within itself. So that's why <laughs> the least liked group is really going to be <laughs> the ones that are coming in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. The ones that are going to be hated, demonized, talked about. You know what I'm saying? The worst, the, the worst group out there really are gonna be the ones that really have the truth. You see? Because yeah, that's setting up. You good? That's setting up. Yahweh coming as prophesied to be a thief in the night. To come as a thief in the night. Let me finish. It says, "But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise." What's that great noise? The missiles. You see that? <laughs> so people can read these uh, these scriptures and have absolutely no... What, what do you mean? What a, a great noise, huh? So people going to be chanting his name and then he's going to come? <laughs> uh, kind of. Yeah. Because we are chanting his name. We heralding his coming. We constantly saying his name. But that great noise ain't talking about us saying his name. In, in the spirit, though, it kind of is. Because the, the, the very words that we speak, that's why the Lord said prophesy to the wind. The very words that's coming out of our mouth is fire. It's, 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 it's written in Jeremiah, the fifth chapter, right? These words is, 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 is like in the missiles coming out of our mouth, destroying these people, man. Like the walls of Jericho. Like the walls of Jericho. Yeah, it, it's a great noise. Also, you can throw a millstone up. <laughs> it's, it's like... What is that machine? Uh, loud noise. Basically, going to a loud noise. Going to a loud noise. No. Yep. Oh, that's 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 on point. It says, and the element shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. 
So all of the, the, the corrupted works, you know, everyone that is not testifying unto the truth, all right? Like the scriptures say in Isaiah 8 and 20, if they speak not according to this word, to the law and to the testimony, all right? To the law and to the testimony. If we're going to get to the testimony, we're going to, no, 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 we're going to get to the testimony because I got it to come up. We're going to get to the testimony, but if they don't speak according to the law and to the testimony, it's because there's no light in them. You see? So the Lord saying, uh, <laughs> the works that there are in shall be burnt up. So if your works are not faithful and true according to the righteousness of Yahweh Bosh and Yahweh Shai, they're going to be burned up, man. That's why you see these camps now. Because it ain't just talking about Esau Edom being exposed, man. You niggas out there that call yourself Israelites, bringing forth their confusion, bringing forth their babal, man. Bringing forth these false doctrines, man. You're going to be exposed. You're going to be uncovered. By what? That great millstone grinding. Okay? That great millstone grinding, man. Give me Amos 9 and 8 real quick, man. 9 and 9. Man, you can start at 8. Read through it. Read through. Uh, yeah, start at 8. This is Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Behold the eyes of the <laughs> Lord. Power. This is Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. Saving that, I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, said the Lord, Yahweh. For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel. He said he will what? He, I, he, lo, he will command, and he will sift the house of Israel. Now, how you know that Amos 9 and 8 is talking about uh, not just the angels in the spiritual realm, but it's also talking about the angels on earth, right? When you go to the very next precept that he just read, it says, For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel, all right? Now, when you go into, again, grind, right? Uh, grinder. It's dealing with uh, with grain, okay? It, it's dealing with let me let me get jump to the point. Machine for milling, see? A machine for milling, okay? One who grinds grain, okay? So the Lord not only just using the angels in the spiritual realm to sift. <laughs> He using the angels on earth, our brethren, okay? The, the angels are our brethren, so the, we are on that same, Lord willing, we are the elect of that number of his husbandry, okay? We are part of those, uh, we are part of that machine that grinds meal, okay? Now, if you take flour and put it in a sifter, mm -hmm. when you shake it, <laughs> All the undesirables fall off. You see? Mm -hmm. Anything that's not whole falls off. That's the spirit, man. Okay? That's the spirit of what's working in the earth today. All right? It says, grind uh, to gnash the teeth. Okay? It says, to, to, to grind, to gnash the teeth, corn, grain. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead, bro. Go back. Destroyed by crushing. Oh, okay. Hold on. Okay. This is uh, Amos chapter 9, verse 9. For lo, I will command and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a seed, yet not the least grain fall upon the earth. Yet not the least grain shall fall upon the earth. So the great millstone is grinding grain. And if you're not whole, you're going to be crushed. <laughs> you, you're going to be reduced to powder. We're going to get that too. <laughs> All right, so 
What was we just said? Did we we jump to that right? We jumped to Amos nine and eight from what? Um, you read the precept before. It was in Isaiah forty seven. Nah, you know what? We jumped from Peter. We jumped. We jumped from Second Peter three and ten, and we got in the spirit because I want to keep going. So yeah, you got Luke. We never we never bring out Luke seventeen and twenty. Yeah. Let's go to Luke seventeen and twenty. This is Luke. Chalaka, we'll hold that one. Go. You get the James. You know about our James. Go ahead. Bring bring out what you got. Bring out what I got? Yeah. Bring out what you got. I, had, I was going to the um, being ill for crying up the palace. Oh, that's the last precept. Okay, go. Go ahead. So go to Luke. Go on, go to Luke. Come on, Chalaka. Kind of get a little excited. This is Luke chapter 17, verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of the Most High should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of the Most High cometh not with ob ob observation. Neither shall they say, Lo, here, or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of the Most High is within you. Keep going. He said that, now, let's, let, now he just read that whole thing. Now we're gonna break it down and tie it back to what the brother was saying uh in Isaiah 47 and 3, which this brother read, to my read, right? I shall not meet thee as a man. Okay? When the Lord comes, he's coming with what? Power. Now the Lord told the disciples, verse 20. This is Luke chapter 17, verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of the Most High should come, he answered them and said, "The kingdom of the Most High cometh not with observation. The kingdom of the, the kingdom of heaven cometh not with observation. So the kingdom of heaven ain't gonna come for niggas just standing around watching, lollygagging, idle, idle, just looking. Just, just, just. go ahead. Neither." Shall they say, Lo, here, or lo, there? For behold, the kingdom of the Most High is within you. For behold, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So it said, The kingdom of heaven, he told, he told him, said, The kingdom of heaven cometh not by observation, but it cometh with power. And then he told him, Lo, the kingdom of heaven is within you. So what's within us? What power though? What's the power? Get 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 Revelation nineteen and ten. Get get Revelation nineteen and ten. It's uh, look at Revelation nineteen and ten, and I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am that fellow servant, and of that brethren that have the testimony of Yahushua, and of that brethren which have the testimony of Yahweh Shah. So the angel told John the Revelator that he was his fellow brethren who also holds the testimony of Yahweh Shah. Now remember, the question what I just asked was what? What's that power that's within us? It's going to be revealed. Go ahead. Yep. Worship the Most High, for the testimony of Yahweh Shah is, is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony is what? Spirit of prophecy. The testimony is what? Of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. So the great millstone is Yahweh Shai. The great millstone is Yahweh Shai. The power that fuels the great millstone is the spirit of Yahweh Shai, which is the spirit of prophecy, which also works within the rest of the millstones, man. So it starts with that name. It starts with the name. Okay. You gotta know, you gotta know the name. Alright? You gotta know the name of the power. <laughs> All those things. Every because that's in the scriptures, Acts 4 and 12. Okay? Yeah. See, everything that we say. Is within the contents of the scriptures and they testify of Yahweh Shah and his coming. Because that's ultimately what we're supposed to be doing. That's why when you read in 1 Corinthians 14, I believe it's 32, it says, What? The spirit of the prophets are subject unto the prophets, man. 
All right. Now, the same testimony that John the Revelator had of that stone uh, being cast into the sea. Now, the sea, rep the sea represents really nations. Okay. The sea really represents nations. Did not Jeremiah have that same vision of Babylon when you read in Jeremiah the 51st chapter? Yeah. Go to Jeremiah 50, 51, 59, and read through uh, verse 63. Showing you that that spirit is uh, in agreement with a whole body. That body is the Lord's elect. Okay? Before you go there, go jump back to Amos 9. Read 11 again. So we can get what that body is. Because that body now has been raised up. Okay? And it's being raised up. The whole body, the whole house, the whole husbandry is being raised up. As we continue to plant these seeds, all right, the fruit is being raised up, man. This is Amos, <clears throat> this is Amos chapter 9, verse, verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. So... What you're going to see is the house of David, okay? That's the great millstone is going to be the real house of David, man. <laughs> you see? That's that's what's going to be raised up. And they're going to be known by the spirit that is working within them. How is Yahweh Shai known? Through prophecy. You see? For the whole thing of us getting his name, we were going in, in the land of our captivity, we shall remember ourselves and think upon his name. Yeah. That's prophecy. That's us being raised back up out of our captivity. <laughs> hey, can I get something real quick? <clears throat> this is the book of Zechariah 4 and 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Now, woo, bring that again. <laughs> bring that again, man. Yep, this is uh, Zechariah 4 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Which Zerubbabel <laughs> was King David. Yep. All right? If you can receive it. See, you, like, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's me. See, it's certain things that's uh, written in the scriptures that's plain, and it's some things that's written in the scriptures that only bears witness with the spirit, man. <laughs> Romans 8, 16 and 17, man. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God, man. All right? And joint heirs with him. <laughs> so our reward is coming, man. All right, Lord willing, and I say I, as, as, as the hopeful elect, okay, as a firm believer, all right, that I'm of the hopeful elect, okay, and these brothers that labor along uh, beside me as well. Go ahead, bro. Yep, it said, uh, this is the word of, of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. By the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh which is what? The spirit of prophecy. That's what's fueling the millstones. All right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Because it say watch and pray also, right? You know, we watching the sign. It's a uh, message of time diligent itself. You see? So it's filling up when we see things, you know, come up like uh, off on uh, off of the market chip. You know, uh, warm us and warm us and warm. You know? We see, when we see these things fill us up, because we'll say, uh, uh, what's that, Sirach 39, the 30, 39 and 1, you will be occupied in prophecy, man. You know, you occupied in some way. You, you went to, you occupied, you laboring, man. You know, this is your business, you occupied, man. Go ahead. You better say go to um, Jeremiah. Jeremiah uh, 51, 
and start at 59. <clears throat> this is Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 59. Matter of fact, Wabba Pusha, before you go there, jump up to Jeremiah 51 and 1. Because just to, just to set the tone that Jeremiah is prophesying of Babylon is just as well as John the Revelator was prophesying of Babylon. Go ahead. This is Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 1. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. A destroying wind. You know, a nuclear missiles, man. And we go into spirit. See, and, and, and everything testifies of Yahweh and Yahushua. All right, that wind is coming out of us first to reveal and expose. See, it, expose don't always mean a bad thing. Expose really just means to reveal, uncover something, right? Which is what which is what revelation means. Okay, so we are exposing the power. Of your heart while she can have a shot into the world. <laughs> and he says, Where it's within us. How is the kingdom of heaven gonna come? When Babylon the Great is destroyed by thermonuclear missiles, but he said that power is in us. So the more we prophesy, the quicker the kingdom comes, the quicker these things come to pass. With great labor. <laughs> Man, bro, go ahead, bro. This is Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 59. The word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded, Sariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Messiah, when, when he went with, uh, Z Z what did it call? Zechariah? Yep, Zedekiah. Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and to Babylon in the fourth year, his reign and this Sariah was a quiet prince. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon. Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that shall come upon Babylon. All right? Bad times, peril, violence, death, destruction. He wrote everything that would be coming unto Babylon in a book. We have it. We bear witness, we're testifying of the day, the book of Jeremiah, <laughs> okay? He, he prophesied of what was going to happen to Babylon before it happened, right? Go ahead. Verse 60, so Jeremiah wrote in a book, all the evil shall come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. Yep. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, when thou comest to Babylon, and shall see and shall read all these words. Then shall I say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it. Neither thou shall cut it off, that none shall remain in it. So that's how we know it's not talking about ancient Babylon. Okay? Because when ancient Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar was cut off, there still dwelt people in Babylon. Babylon still, uh, what's that, modern-day Iraq, right? If I'm not mistaken. Correct me on the coming board if I'm wrong, but I believe, no, Bab I that is, I, I believe Babylon today is modern-day Iraq. But even after Babylon was destroyed, Alexander the Great, uh, uh, everybody dwelt in Babylon, okay? You had the Seleucids dynasty. They dwelt in Babylon, okay? <laughs> Everybody, plenty of nations dwelt in Babylon after ancient Babylon was destroyed. So we know that Jeremiah wasn't talking about ancient Babylon. He was talking about modern day Babylon, which is America today. All right? So go ahead and see what he's going to, and see what the conclusion is of what he told Sariah, the prince. Go ahead. Neither man nor, be nor beast. Start at the top of that verse again. This is Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 60. 62. Then shall they say, O Lord, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be 
desolated forever. And it shall be desolate forever. Nobody's going to dwell there forever. So this prophecy ain't come to pass yet. Go ahead. And it shall be when thou hast made an end of reading this book that thou shalt bind a stone to it and cast it into the midst of Euphrates. Mm. After thou hast finished reading this, thou shalt cast a, 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 tie a stone to it and cast it into the Euphrates, man. Okay? So that's just, in essence, the same thing uh, that uh, the angel told uh, John the Revelator on the island of Patmos, man. Okay? That it was going to be thrown down by a great millstone. So he said, after he, after he read it, throw it in the sea. Tie a stone to it and throw it in the sea, man. Okay? So that's the spirit behind uh, Yahweh Shai being that stone, man. Okay? Yahweh Shai is that great millstone. And the prophets that come in his stead are what? The millstones that are that are that are a part of that, that whole body. Okay? That whole unit. Right? So there's no way that. Uh, anything uh, that Yahweh Shai has built or set up will ever be broken. Okay? Anything that's a part of Yahweh Shai's body, a part of his spirit, won't be broken, man. Okay? Give me that in Psalms real quick. Psalms 34 and 18. No, no, it's not. Psalms. Psalms 34 and 20. He keep all his bones, not one of them. Started at 19. Uh, Psalms 34 and 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of, out of them all. He keep it all his bones, not one of them is broken. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. They say what? A righteous man fall seven times, man. Okay? And the Lord delivers you. Because the righteous, the thing about the, the, the righteous are those that are, uh, have the ability to repent, to regroup, to recover from, them, from their falls. But the wicked and the non-believing, the multitude that he said that was born in vain, they, they're incapable of recovering, repenting from their falls. All right? It says, verse 20 again. I know you just read it. He keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. See? Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord Yahweh redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. So they not, they're not going, he said, he said, not the, the least grain, <laughs> shall, not the, shall not the least grain fall to the earth. Okay? So the most high going to keep us. Lord willing, we are those elect. Destroy Babylon, which he is that stone that's going to destroy Babylon. We not going to be broken. That stone ain't gonna fall on us. Gotcha. <laughs> so I lost none except the son of uh, son of perdition. Yep, yep, and 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 ultimately, uh, the son of perdition represents uh, Judas. But you got those that come in that in that Judas spirit. See, Judas has a uh, Ju there's, there's a seed that came out of Judas, right? You have that, you have uh, individuals out there with that Judas spirit, okay? Uh, what was his name? Uh, the so-called God sent comforter. He came in that Judas spirit, man. He sold out Yahweh Shah, all right? For filthy lucre's sake. We ain't gonna say no other names, but some other you guys out there too. Merchandising the, uh, the truth, selling it. That's a Judas spirit, man. See? Go ahead, bro. You get the, uh, you got some? Uh, nah, I'm a, uh, nah. Last, last precept. Yeah, this is the book of Luke 20, uh, 
want to start at nine? Yeah, you can start at nine and read because it kind of sum up what we went into. This book of Luke 29, then began he to speak to the people this parable. A son man planted a vineyard and led it forth to husbandmen. This 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 parable is speaking of Yahweh Shah. That man is Yahweh Shah. Go ahead. Remember we read that in Second Ezra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. And led it forth to husbandmen and went into a far country for a long time. Second Ezra's nine. It's, it's going into it. All right, go ahead. And at the season, he sent a servant to the husbandmen that they should give him of the fruit of the vineyard. But the husbandmen beat him and sent him away empty. So that servant that he sent represents the prophets. Go ahead. And again, he sent another servant. And they beat him also and, and treated him shamefully and sent him, and sent him away empty. So that's in today's time would be when you see us doing rebuke videos you see us doing reproof videos and these guys are not accepting it and not correcting you know where they going off that's them beating us that's them rejecting Yahweh shot mm -hmm. i was just saying they marking marking us and you know, talking shit shamefully you know, but yep. it's good saying so why it's a shame they bring you the glory though. Yep. So, and that, and I just, uh, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. You, you made the point. Go ahead. Because it's um, Luke 20 and 12. And again, he sent a third. And they wounded him also and cast him out. Then said the Lord of the vineyard, What should I do? I will send my beloved son. It may be they will reverence him when they shall see him. But when the husbandmen saw him, they reasoned among themselves, saying, This is the earth. Come, let us kill him, that the inheritance may be ours. And this, <laughs> hey, and this parable is so deep because it was speaking in present time, but it, it applied, it still applies to now. That's how you know when you read in Ecclesiastes when it say, The thing that has been is the thing that shall be, and there's no new thing under the sun. Essentially, it's talking about the spirit of things because the spirit never dies. Energy, all right, which we get from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, it never dies. It's in, it, 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 it just keeps on, you know what I'm saying? It keeps coming back around. Recycling. It keeps recycling, yeah. right? Now, this is talking about when Yahweh Shah came 2,000 years ago. They rejected him, man. Beat him. Said, come on, let us, let us destroy him. <laughs> And he was he was speaking his parables to these wicked uh, Pharisees, and they didn't even know what he was talking about, man. You see how powerful that is? Yep. How you expose somebody for who they are, and they don't even know that you're talking about them. They can't even see that it's talk. That, that's how you know that that, that parabolic spirit uh, that Yahweh Shah had is still working today. You be exposing these dudes and, and, and showing people who these people are. And, People still don't get it. They yeah. still don't see it. Uh, go over the top of their head. Go right over their head. But then you had the chief high priest. What's that in the book of John? He said, what, what did he say? Uh, they came together and they counseled like, hey, you, let's just kill him, basically, man. You know? I don't, I don't want to get it make the lesson long. You know, but yeah, like, brother, you can just give, yeah. them, give them the chapter and tell them to read it. You know, just tell them where yeah. it's in and just, hey, to, to, yeah, it's a good read. Yeah, what you I know? do, I just put it in, uh, on, on the comment board. Uh, yeah, kind, Lord willing. Kind. So back in Luke 20 and uh, 15, so they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. What therefore should the Lord of the vineyard do unto them? Mm -hmm. He should come and destroy these husbandmen and should give the vineyard to others. And when they heard it, they said, the most I forbid. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. That stone, that head stone, is Yahweh Shah. And his body, which is also uh, a stone, is what? The house of David. Peter. That rock, the church, is also the stone. Because within uh, the church, 
you have the chief head, which is Yahweh Shah, and then you have the head council, <laughs> all right, which comes down to uh, Yahweh Shah, King David, and then the 12, man, and the rest of the 144,000. You see, those are the servants that y'all rejected. Right. Because we have became in the form of a parable unto you, man. All right? He yeah. said the Lord is a, a, a stumbling block. All right? You read in Romans the 11th chapter, okay? It talks about a stumbling block. Y'all shot that stumbling block. That stone. Go ahead, bro. You had something else, man. I thought you read. Okay, go ahead. It said, Whatsoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. Whatever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. And broken in the sense of what? You 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 shall have uh, once once you fall into this truth, because we all fell into this truth. Alright? We really all stumbled into this truth, man. You know what I'm saying? We didn't find the truth, the truth found us. <laughs> And we was broke. Yep. Contrite spirit. Contrite spirit. You want to get that? I, I didn't think you want to get it. <laughs> Man, I know what you're going to say. Because okay. uh, uh, it looked like you were ready to get it. Now I'm just going to say, um, it's in uh, John 11 chapter. Okay. John 11, um, you can start at 47. John 11, 47, you know. Uh, what, what, that, what you were speaking on earlier? Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the chief high priest. The chief high priest, God. Kind of. Yep. And Yahweh Shah really the chief high priest, man. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no chief other than Yahweh Shah, man. He's the chief, man. Right? I'm just reading 53, John 11, 53. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together for to put him to death. Mm -hmm. That's what I was speaking on. That's what that prayer was speaking on. Yep. Go ahead. And then and guess what? Then you read the next verse down, you know, John, I mean uh, Luke 19 and 19. No, let me finish 18. It said, whatsoever shall fall upon that stone should be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. It will grind him into powder, destroyed by crushing. Right. All right? So, you know, <laughs> that's how uh, these men's work are being exposed. All right? As a matter of fact, uh, I think it's in Corinthians, if I am mistaken. It say, uh, "Be careful how you build on on that foundation, all right? Because uh, yeah. every man's work will will be uh, revealed by fire." By fire. No, <laughs> you see, and no. hey, man, this word that we speak, all right, it's the fire of the spirit of your heart by shining your heart with shine. Okay, and the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai fuels us to grind and to keep going, to keep going, to keep going, to keep going. See, when you get caught up in your own wickedness and prideful heart and mind, you'll be broken. All right, because the Most High hates pride, He hates that willful, self will uh, spirit. But the, the spirit of the elect knows that what? Man's goings are of the Lord. All right. The spirit of the elect knows that without Yahweh Shimmy Yahweh Shai, we are incapable of uh, receiving the kingdom of heaven, man. We can't get the kingdom of heaven unless the spirit of power Yahweh Shimmy Yahweh Shai is with us. That's why we repent, okay? Because every day the kingdom of heaven is closer and closer. Right. So we repent daily. Another day closer to the kingdom. Another day closer to the kingdom, man. It's another day that we need to be of a of a pure mind and a clean, uh, contrite heart, man. All right? And that only happens through his word, which washes and cleanses us. All right? But you have to work to maintain that pure water, to maintain that oil that anoints and exalts us, man. You don't just get those things for free. Great labor. Right? Because when you go back, to uh when you go back to second Ezra 9 and 22 it said it said the exact words great labor well when you say great millstone what are you saying great labor uh, why do you divide the word study to show that self approval why do you divide the word truth study means labor 
Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that's, like that. that's the point. So, hey, at the end of the day, man, if you truly are of that great millstone, you won't be broken. And it ain't got nothing to do with that name in particular being on you. But the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai gave our apostles that name. All right? And we fell into their labors. We 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 entered into their labors. Okay. They entered into Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai labors, man. Okay? And we in that venue all together working for that penny, the kingdom of heaven. And we won't stop. Lord willing, we are those men until the kingdom of heaven comes. All right? So, Lord, will you were edified again, giving all praises and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Makakadash. Double, double honors once again to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Quam Yasharala, Abab Abal, Rise Israel, Destroy Confusion, Shalom, Lava Kari. Peace to the left. <laughs>